All right, we are going to get started. As you probably heard the little voice just say, this is going to be recorded so that other people can view this recording later on that may not be able to come. My name is Caitlin Costello, and I am the Grants Coordinator for Genesee Valley Council on the Arts. I do want to note before we get started that this is not going to be a full seminar. I do have those coming up later in the next couple of months, and we will show a schedule of those events later on at the, during this presentation. Um, but this is just going to be an overview of some of the really great changes that are going to be taking place to the SER program this year. Uh, as you can see, my email and phone number is on screen. Uh, if you need to contact me for any reason afterward, please feel free to do so. And as we're going through this, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. There is going to be a Q&A section at the end of this little seminar to go over anything and to clarify any questions. So some of the things that we are going to cover are just a general overview of what SCR is for those of you that are new information about our increase in funding, multiple rounds, some changes to the individual artist program, the current seminar schedule, where and how you can get some extra help with the program, uh, information about our panels and Spanish applications, along with a couple other things that didn't require a full slide. So the statewide community re-grant program has three different grants under the umbrella that you can read about there. They are the Arts and Education Grant, the Community Arts Grant, and the Individual Artist Grant. These grants are made up to $5,000 to individual artists and cultural organizations to bring art to the local level with local decision making. I do want to note that NISCA applicants are not eligible to apply or be a fiscal sponsor for this project as it comes from the same pool of money from NISCA applicants. So if you applied for a program directly to the NISCO website earlier this spring, you would not be eligible for one of these grants, whether or not you received funding from NISCA. That's a rule that we've been fighting for years, but they are holding fast to. So our increase in funding. Think, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I had a granola bar right before we got started. Uh, thanks to the generous work of the New York State Senate, along with their collaboration with NISCA, SCR, or GBCA is one of 26 sites across the state. And we were one of seven that was given a very generous increase in funding that will affect our program going through until at least December of 2024. Because of this increase in funds, we will have more than double the amount of funding to give to each county per year, which is just crazy. So if you know anybody that is looking for grants and looking for funding, this is the time to come get these funds. We, have, we will have so much money to distribute to give to so many great programs. So with that, there is a few different things that are going to be happening this year. The first being there is going to be multiple rounds of funding. In the past, we have done one round of funds that starts around now in the fall and concludes early winter. We are going to also be doing the second round in the spring, similar to what we did last year for the Restart Mini Grant. So there's going to be two rounds with two separate timelines. Project one or round one will have a timeline of January to December 2023, our normal cycle. Uh, that opens in September 2022. Right now, Morning. review deadline will take place on November 23rd, 2022, three weeks prior to the deadline. It should be Thursday, but I'm not doing any reviews on Thanksgiving. And the grant deadline for that will be December 15th. Panels for this will be held in January to February, and notifications will be somewhere between February and March. If you are funded, you will be mailed your check as you have been the last few years directly after receiving your contract back to me. Round two will open after that panel has concluded with the timeline for the projects being July of 2023 to June of 2024. So this is going past our normal year. It opens, as I said, in March after those panels conclude with a review deadline where you can submit to me to get that review in April on the 27th. 
the final deadline for 2023 is May 18th. Following that, we will have panels and the grant funding notifications will be out somewhere between late June to early July. If you are funded, we are going to have a big in-person celebration for both grants, both rounds in July is what my goal is. So checks will not be handed out at that time, but there will be a big networking celebration to have again in person. So with these multiple rounds, there's a couple different ways you can apply. You can treat it as if it's a normal cycle and apply for 5K in the fall, or you could apply for up to 5K in the spring. You can also split that up. So you could have a community arts grant in the fall where you're requesting 2,500 and another one in the spring for another 2,500 for a different project. Um, if you were denied funding in the fall, you can reapply for that program in the spring if the timelines match up um, and it's not capping out the request for a different project. Or if you receive partial funding for projects, say you requested $5,000 to do a theater production uh, for the December deadline. If you only get $3,000, you still have $2,000 before you hit your cap. You could do another application in the spring to hit that 5K as long as it is a separate project. I'm sure there's gonna be some questions on that. So feel free to put those in the chat and we can talk about that in a little bit. The changes to the individual artist grant. So we are going back to the flat $2,500 cap where either you get it or you don't for $2,500. Uh, also in the past for the individual artist, you could only apply once every three years. So if I applied for an individual artist grant this year and received it, I wouldn't be able to apply again until 2025. We are waiving that. So if you've applied any time in the last two to three years, you can apply again for the individual artist grant. I do want to note with this grant, if you apply and receive the grant in the fall, you cannot apply for another IA grant in the spring. You can apply for community arts or arts and education, but only one individual artist grant project will be funded. Uh, we are having a minor change to our budget form. Instead of having individual budget forms per category, it is going to be one blank form across the board. You will see that on the website that if you go to either of the grant or any of the grants, they are all the same form, but they will still have it be in Excel or docu form. So we'll take a quick look at that because there is another change that I want to show. Uh, give me a little uh, thumbs up if you can see this form. Okay, thank you. So that's a little too small, make it a little bit bigger. So the, as I said, we are changing to everybody being on one form. And the other major difference is this column here for grant amount requested. Many of you have projects that exceed the $5,000 cap. So you have a, I've, I know one of our grants has $40,000 for the overall project expense, but we do ask you to show, you know, everything that is going on with your project. This column will allow you to say like, hey, we know our venue is not eligible because they're a NISCA applicant. We're not requesting money for our venue. We're requesting money for technical expenses or artistic expenses. So this will really be able to allow you to delineate what you were requesting your funds for here in a separate place than in your narrative. Um, so this is, the rest of it's the same. Uh, you will still be able to edit and add lines to it, which is why it is in that uh, Excel form or the doc form. It's not a PDF, so you can add those lines as needed. Uh, everything else is the same, just all one form and the amount request. Okay. So this is our current seminar schedule and class schedule. This year, we are going to be having several classes throughout uh, the year in technical uh, assistance. So, so our first class is going to be Grant Writing 101 with Je uh, Jess Hassler, which is gonna be taking place next Wednesday. And then we have a couple other places where it's going to be in-person or virtual. There is gonna be a couple QR codes throughout this um, 
seminar. So to use a QR code, you just open your phone's camera and scan it like you're taking a picture and it will come up with a link for you to click. Uh, if you click that, it will take you to our Eventbrite where you can register for any one of these classes. So we've got a couple in Monroe County and in Livingston going on. I am looking to schedule a few more. So please keep checking back to our website and the Eventbrite to make sure you have all of the updated schedules. So some extra help that will be occurring as we do every year. Uh, we will be having our one-on-one -on -one consults where you can meet individually with me or, or someone with your team to discuss what your project is, how to develop it to meet the requirements of our grant, and just to really get an all-around feel that you are in going in the right direction. We also are having our mentorship program open again this year. We started this last year as a way to connect new applicants with people that have received our grants before or have done a lot of grant work, maybe with other organizations, to help uh, new applicants to write a well-rounded grant. I unfortunately do not have the knowledge and know-how for every single art type. So we try to pair people with like things. So you may be a playwright and you may be paired with a theater, that sort of thing. We try to make it be as close as we can. Last year we had four mentor matches and everybody that did it thought it was a very good experience. So we're hoping to bring it back again this year and have just as great of an experience for people. Panels. So because we are having multiple rounds of grants this year, we are going to need multiple panels. Our panel uh, application is open now. You can view it on our website. And as I said earlier, we're hoping to have panels in January and February and in June and July of this year. Last year, we had panels where it was like every Tuesday for a month, the panel and I would meet. I'm looking at doing a similar schedule to that this year, but I don't have anything set in stone yet because I don't know who I'm going to be working with. With how this year is laid out, if you have not been on a panel before, I highly encourage you to consider doing the process. Everyone that I have met with that has applied for the grants and then done a panel said that it was a very interesting and educational experience because you really see how the mind of the panel works. I know I've told many of you before, like, oh, the panel really liked this or they didn't like that. But it's hard to really explain how the panel's mind as a collective works until you are there in that setting. They always think of things that I don't or see things that I don't pick up on because they're, you know, five to seven other eyes on it. So I highly encourage you to consider doing that this year since there will be two rounds. Panels will be paid uh, as they were last year, uh, a stipend, and it's going to be a scale based on the number of, based on the number of applications that we do receive um, because with the amount of money we are having to distribute, I don't know how many applications we are going to get, and I want to make sure that you are well compensated for the time that it will take to review all of the applications. It usually is about a 15 to 20 hour time commitment, depending on how talkative the panels are and how long it takes you as an individual to review each of those applications. So one of the fun things that's happening this year is I am going to be looking to hire an assistant. So if you know anybody that is looking for a part-time position in the arts and arts funding, uh, I am going to need an assistant starting in a couple of weeks. Uh, we have a few things uh, at GBCA we need to solidify before we put the posting out officially, but I wanted to get the word out that I'm going to be looking for a mini me to assist me with the on the ground work. We're looking for someone who is primarily going to be based in Monroe County, and we would really prefer if they were fluent in the reading, writing, and speaking of Spanish, as we really want to work on building that program up. Which leads me into our Spanish application is available. It is live on the website, though I do want to note that I am still waiting on the guidelines to be translated and updated. So currently the webpage on our website is 
the information from last year with a note that more information is coming soon. And I will, of course, make that known when all of those uh, in guidelines and things have been updated. Um, just got to wait for our lovely translator to work through those. One other thing that I wanted to note before I turn it over to, actually a couple things I want to note before we turn it over to questions is we do have a new director. His name is Scott Habes. His email is the same as Deb's. It is director at gvartscouncil.org. So if anything comes up where you need to reach the director, that is who you'll be reaching. Scott started a couple of weeks ago and has been really great. Um, other thing that I want to note with the fall application specifically, our review deadline is, as I said earlier, November 23rd, but I do want to highly encourage you that if you need help until I get my assistant on board to do it earlier in November, I am going to be out for a week, um, the week of Veterans Day, and then there's Thanksgiving, and then the last week in November, I will be downstate for a NISCA conference that is required. So I will be offline, unable to probably access my email too much for about three to four days then. So I want to make sure that anybody coming into the program knows that I want to make sure that I give you the most help that I can, but I'm not going to be as accessible as normal in November. So I want to make sure that that is known. But I'm going to stop the screen share now and we'll shift it to any questions people have. Let me turn to chat. Okay. So if you have any questions, feel free to raise a hand and we can go through them. It's a lot of information and I realize I talked really fast. So if there's anything you need me to clarify, I can do that now. Hey, Karen. You are muted, Karen. Good seeing you. I have a couple questions, but I'll ask one at a time so okay. other people can ask. Um, the one thing, one of the things that jumped out to me is on the budget form, I noticed that the notes are in the middle as opposed to being able to write the notes on the side. Um, will we still be able to write the notes on the side? Yeah, so that is the notes column will expand as you write into it. I think you were using an older adapted form. Everything should go into the box and the box will just grow as you write the notes into it rather than going off the page and creating multiple documents within it. Okay, so the grant request, is that the amount for each? Are you itemizing each grant? Each sure. item now has a request? On it. So if you say are hiring, you're putting $2,000 in artistic staff, um, or sorry, we'll make it bigger. Say you're requesting $7,000 in artistic staff total for your project, not just from us, but total, that's what you're expecting to pay. That would be the opportunity to say, okay, we're doing $3,000 and break it up by, you know, this is going to this person, this is going to this person, this is going to this person. And that is the direct request from our grant. There may be, you know, $4,000 that's coming somewhere else, but that money is being requested from us. So then we can say, okay, um, one of the things that came up a lot in the past year was uh, individuals working with Hochstein as a venue. It's a wonderful place to perform. They are a NISCA applicant. So anybody that put Hochstein as a venue and didn't elaborate anywhere that, you know, those funds were coming from somewhere else, I had to deduct from the overall amount. This will give people the opportunity to just say, like, we're working with Hochstein. The venue request is uh, amount is this much that we're paying them, but we're not asking you for that. So then it can be clear and people are not deducted money that wasn't going to be requested from that anyway. So is there a way we can find out, you know, who possibly on our budget is like a NISCA recipient so that we like flow the request to another line item? Correct. I get a, a list of everyone that has applied for a NISCA grant. I am waiting for that list to come in from the state, but I do receive that list every year. Okay. Oh, and then one more question on the budget. Like, is there is there a total amount of the budget that you all like cap that can be requested? That's the $5,000 for the community arts or, um, 
2,500 for individual artist. So that is the max request you can get from us. You can put on the form, like there, there is an organization from Monroe County that every year has a forty to $50,000 overall budget for their year. They're only requesting $5,000 for us for a small portion of the project. Okay. So that's where, you know, this can really show, okay, this is going to this, this is going to this. We're not asking you for 40K. We're only asking for this much for this. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Yes. Uh, Kathleen. I'm uh, just new to your process and the, the deadline page went by fast for me. Yes. So can you clarify? I wasn't sure when I need to get the grant to you looked like different than when the grant review deadline is? Yes. So the grant review deadline is if you feel like you have a good grasp, but you want to make sure you're on the right track, you can send it to me three weeks prior and I will review and give notes and feedback back to you. Afterward, the final deadline will be uh, for the fall deadline is December 15th and for the spring deadline is May 18th. Each year Thursday and the uh, program closes at 4 p.m. And if you are at 359.59, I'm sorry, but you will be mixed and it won't let you submit it. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Oh, I did have one more. So yeah. the event that I'm aiming toward is May of 2023. So mm -hmm. that's a correct for this cycle. Yes, so that I would apply for the fall portion then. Other questions? Anything to do with the multiple rounds and how you apply with that? Karen? Okay, so um, when did you say the notification for the second round is? Uh, June to July, depending on how long the panel takes. The reason why I'm asking that question is, um, our fiscal year ends at the end of June. So, um, I mean, I can talk to you about this more later, but mm -hmm. you know, so I was trying to figure out the logistics of, of that. Um, I don't know, do you just have any feedback about? I do not. Um, this is a new thing. We established it a couple of weeks ago. So that honestly is not something that has come up in any of our discussions. And um, I will reach out to others across the state and figure out how they are looking at that because I am not sure what I can't say whether or not it would be like right away in June. Um, last year, the panels took between four and six weeks, depending on the county. Uh, and again, we were meeting weekly because that was what worked with everyone's schedules. Um, we may do it where everything is done in one day, like we did in the past. And it could be, you know, June 20th that you get the notification. But I, at this point, I can't say definitively when it would be. And that's why there's that range. Okay, because we have one show that is in the spring, um, mm -hmm. in June, and another one that would be in 23 in December. That's why I'm asking. And I can talk to you about this more later because mm -hmm. I can hold it up. But okay, great. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Kathleen, and then I've got a couple questions in the chat that I'm going to hit. I, I think I understood you to say that, that you could be on the panel even if you were applying for a grant. Is that correct? So uh there is people that across the state do have it where if you're on the panel and you have an application and you can you just need to recuse yourself i am more looking at it right now as if if you apply in the fall and you're not going to do a spring application you could be on a spring panel and go about it that way and i do have another question in the chat about panels so the applicant themselves does not go before the panel but i bring um the notes that I have made about the application and there is a group of five to seven individuals from across the county that review the application and uh, give notes and then discuss it kind of like a workshop um, and within the guidelines there is a page that goes over the different things that the panel looks at um, and they rank the, the applications and they are the ones that decide who is funded and by how much 
I do not make those decisions. My board does not make those decisions. It is made by members of the community um, who are within the arts in some way. I do look, um, we get the applications in and I look at those that have submitted to be on the panel and what we have for applications. And I then, you know, vet and go through and make sure that we have a wide range of individuals, both within artistic quality and the actual person themselves. So if we have a couple applications that deal heavily with race and gender, I make sure that we have individuals that are not just white, uh, not just straight on the panel to represent everybody. Uh, can you explain the rounds again? Can you apply for 5K for both rounds? So no, unfortunately, unlike the mini grant where you could apply for 5K for that and for SCR, this is the same pool of money. So it is 5K or three grants total. So that cap, cap is the same as it has been in the past. Um, so you could apply for $5,000 for a community arts grant in December and not be funded. And you could then try again in the spring for a different pro or for that project or a different one, depending on your timeline. Uh, you could be partially funded and then apply for a different project in the spring. Okay. Um, or you could just apply in the spring, <laughs> uh, depending on you know when your projects are. That could be a way to strategize. You know, I have something that's happening in the fall and something that's happening in the um, spring or early in 2024. And I can try for both of those and have it. So it's kind of, you know, you would know in June if you have funding for January rather than how it's been in the past where you have to wait to apply until fall and then your event happens, you may not know for a couple months. So it's kind of going to frog hop a little bit. Um, but I am also really excited if you know anyone that works with schools and wants to do an arts education project Many years, arts educators have been asking me to do a calendar year based grant. Here you go. This is the school year calendar based grant. So if you apply in the spring, it will cover the school year of 23 to 24. Uh, how many grants will be handed out each round? Um, <laughs> it will be total between the two counties, Whatever the equivalent is, I can't think of what the exact number was. It'll be about 100 grants total between the two counties. It's about $255,000 total wow. between the two um, this year and 2024. So, or, yes, 24. Um, on average, we pre COVID, we were handing out 60 grants total. So, when I say this is the years to apply. If you know anyone that is looking for funding, come get some funding, <laughs> come do some things, do a well-written, well-thought-out grant, and there is funds here for everyone. Okay, I think that was all the questions in the chat for now. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Karen. Okay, so if um, you if if we apply um, for like a one project in the spring, and we mm -hmm. apply for five thousand dollars, and unbelievably wonderful, we get the five thousand. We get awarded the five thousand dollars. Then that answers the question that we have fulfilled the grant cap, and so therefore we cannot apply, we're not eligible to apply for the second round grant. Correct. Okay, but if we get partial award for the spring show, then we'll know that whatever is not, doesn't add up to the cap is what is the amount that can be asked for the second grant. Exactly, correct. Okay. Um, and I do also want to note with the leapfrogging, if you apply for a grant for round two for the June, July to June calendar year, you are still eligible for a full 5K to apply in fall 23 for January to December or July to June then. 
because all of the funds will be distributed within calendar year 2023. So pretty much until 2024, if you play your cards right, you have four grant opportunities between now and December of 2024, which is amazing. <laughs> yes, Karen. Okay, so if we if we apply for a spring grant and we get the five thousand dollars then you're saying that we could in the fall apply for a fall grant if we have like a, a winter 23 show for the five thousand for another five thousand dollars if you apply in december of 22 for calendar year 23 and you receive $5,000, the next time you would be able to apply would be fall 23 for 24. Okay, all right, okay. It's a little confusing with the the jumping, so I just wanna make sure that it is clear for everyone for all your projects. Other questions? Kathleen. So this is project based. I, um, I'll be submitting for a choir where we would want funding to have additional, um, most of our singers are not paid, but to have some that were, mm -hmm. but, but it would be over the course of the year to prepare for an event. Is that acceptable? Yep. So paying people is fine. Yes, very much so. We want you to pay your artists. Thanks. Mm -hmm. A couple Anyone questions else? in the chat. Oh, was there more? Yeah, in the chat. Um, um, but are any are any of those grant assistant dates in person in Rochester? Yes, uh, we have Rush Library is going to be in person. There is one that is going to be in person and virtual at Spiritus Christi Church, Hamlin Library. And there's one more. Let me go back to my little screen. Is that list online? Yes, it is on Eventbrite. Yeah. Uh, and it is also on our community calendar. And on our Facebook, there is individual Facebook events for each of the seminars. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, Brockport, we will be having one at the Brockport main campus. That was my other one. Okay. All right. So I guess you could go to a couple of these. Yes, if of course. Like, okay. Yes. Um, and the at least one seminar will uh, that I will hold virtually. I'm not sure if it'll be the Spiritus Christi one or a separate one. Will be recorded and it will be put up on our YouTube channel. Uh, we do have also the last couple of years I've done virtual seminars and those are also recorded. Uh, it's going to be very similar, but obviously due to some of these changes that are occurring this year, there is things that will be different. Um, I do also have a Spanish translated seminar up there. It is a little bit funky, I will say, because it was, I sent the seminar to someone else and they recorded what I was saying. And then I did my best to make sure that it lined up with all of my slides. So it is a little bit wonky, but um, until we have those updated information, or that updated information, that is a good source to send anyone that you know that's primary language is Spanish. Okay. Did you say when the application to apply would become available? Today. It oh, is. I'm sorry. It I is, think I missed that. <laughs> it is available today. If you go to our website and go to the grants page, there's a big button where you can click into submittable. You will need to make an account, but that's just with uh, an email and password, and then you will be able to if you come back multiple times, you can view prior applications uh, and any messages or anything like that that was made there. Okay. Now, besides this application, is, is this just the one application that we're filling out, the one that you, I'm a very much a novice here. So yeah, is this just uh, that one application that you, that you showed earlier? And is that all we're doing? Um, so we're that is now? one portion of it. That is our budget page. I can show you the application, uh, which I do in those seminars, go over in depth uh, how to apply for them, what application um, 
questions you may have and all of the application questions are in our guidelines as well okay, good. with all of the um, information on supplemental materials and different things that you would need. Okay. So the best thing to do, you're going to have a seminar, the best thing to do would be to go online, print out all the documents so that we have them in front of you, us, when you do that first seminar. I would love if you did that. Okay. <laughs> I love when people read stuff and come prepared. So okay. yes. And that first seminar you did say would be online? The first yeah. one is not, uh, there is a grant writing 101 class, which is going right. to be um, a general overview, not specific oh. to SER. Okay. That one is just how to apply for a grant, how to prepare your documents for oh, okay. one. That's the um, one on the seventh. Yes, correct. Okay. So let me share my screen and I can show you the application. So this is what the application will look like when you get into it. It has a little bit about it along okay. with the State caps. Um, you'll select what county you are applying for and which grant. Uh, if you just scroll down right now, there is questions that will change. So once you select it, it there is different questions for different okay. uh, grants. And every couple seconds as you're going through, it will save. Like if I type a random thing there, it should, well, it's not a valid email. I know oh, that. Okay. Um, but it will save as if so you just say it's a draft save. Um, so it will save every couple of seconds. And okay. Uh, there is some demographic information that just goes to me to make sure I am reaching an accurate uh, community and I'm getting the word out to everyone that I want to. Uh, there is some narrative questions and then down at the bottom here there is supplemental materials like that budget form that I showed that would be uploaded. There is a okay. save draft button but it also saves every couple seconds and it also um, allows you somewhere on here to add a collaborator so you can work with other people on it. Um, okay. So if there's multiple people in your organization that work on grants or that you want to review it and put any edits in, you are able to do that as well. Okay. Well, while you're talking about that, I have a question. If I were to pl apply for an individual grant for my own project uh, for the first round, July and uh, June, uh, to throughout July, uh, no, I'm sorry, that's January mm -hmm. through December 23rd. Um, okay, if I were to apply, if I were to uh, uh, be awarded a grant, an individual grant that where the limit is $2,500, okay? Mm -hmm. Now I'm a part of another theater group. Would I be able to, well, and we're like five of us to get, mm -hmm. together. Would we be able to, to apply for as a group for the second round? Yes, if you okay. are a nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. you would apply as a separate entity. If you do not, if you, your theater group is not a nonprofit, then you would need to find a fiscal sponsor or community partner to assist you with that as the community, or not the community arts, the arts and education to the individual working with a partner and mm -hmm. a individual artist are the only ones where we can write a check directly to an individual. Um, for community arts, it has to go to a nonprofit organization, and even it could be they are actively working on the project with you, or they just submit documents and put their name on it, and they write the check to you after. Okay. Our fiscal sponsorships have a wide range of relationships in that way. Okay. Uh, I represent a couple organizations and will be writing their grants. Will that be a problem when applying? No. Uh, because the applicant on it would be the organization, uh, not you as the individual. You may be listed as the contact in a couple of different places, but it would be different organizations who would be receiving the check. So you can do that. Uh, okay. Other questions? Uh, can you apply as an individual or LCC for the arts and education project? Uh, yes, <laughs> both. You can apply as an individual artist educator or as an organization um, applying to do the program. Yes, Karen. Um, 
Is, you know, this, the information, that screen that you showed as, as far as the dates and everything for the first round, second round, yep. and the, how to, and the dates and information to reapply yes. for a separate project on the website? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, it is on our website. So let me show you, let me show you our website so you can see where things are. Uh, share screen. Share. So this is our grants page. Uh, if you're on our made page, you go to grants um, and you can see our current offerings where we talk about our grants. Right here is the big apply now button. Uh, we do yeah. have a link to our mailing list. And down here you can see a corral of all of our upcoming yeah. events. This is also where we share any upcoming grantee events. So if you submit an event, it would pop up here on the main page as well as our community calendar. And then over here on the right, we have our quick link. So this will take you to the Brent Bright page to register for any classes or mentorship program, uh, the final budget report forms for some of those that have already gotten grants. And then our consultation 101 uh, program is there. And a little further down is an infographic that shows all of the dates for round one, round two, uh, the review and when the grant funding notices would be. Uh, you can also click up here to go to each of the individual grant types or there's a drop down. Here's our Spanish application. Uh, and you can click in to the grant. It gives an overview and then any documents for that specific grant will be here and then it'll take you back to the overview. Or take you to the home page. That's a broken link that I'll fix later. Also added on here, I do have a list of all of our past recipients in ABC order. Uh, I am working on updating this. So if you go to this later on and you have received a grant in the past uh, and you don't see yourself on here, I just went through the grants that I knew since I started in 2019. Um, so there is some that may not be on here. And the same thing with panelists. This is when you are on the panel and you are serving, it is anonymous and the grantees do not know who you are or where you are from. Uh, and well, everybody's from the county that they're applying from. But once you get to this page, it is everyone from both counties for any year. It's not divided by year or place, so it can't be tracked in any way. But we do have our list of past panelists here. That's not what I wanted. I want to go back to you guys. Where did you go? Stop share. Okay. I saw a couple questions. So um, I noticed proof of residency requirement on the application. How does that work for an organization that just meets for rehearsal? This would be for uh, where is your PO box? Uh, where do you get mail for the organization? Um, that sort of thing. Where is your charter based out of? Um, can you speak a bit about what you were looking for in terms of community engagement? So that kind of varies from program to program. Um, for the individual artist, that would be um, two different programs or branches for that. It is either doing a presentation, having a gallery opening, uh, which these also apply to the community arts, um, doing a presentation, doing a performance, um, having it so anybody off the street can see a sign about your project and go, oh, that sounds cool. I want to go see it and go to it. If you have an admission fee or anything like that, that is also like is part of it. It's just anybody that is able bodied can go see a program on Zoom, can go in person to a program and experience it in some way. The other branch for the individual artist that it does not apply to the community arts grant is the uh, development. So it could be interviewing members of the community to learn their life story and then create a series of paintings based on that um, or different things around that. If you've been in uh, Livingston County when Sean Dunwoody has come or experienced Sean Dunwoody doing any of his murals, I love shouting him out because his process of speaking to the individuals in the community and then creating a massive, beautiful mural based on the history of the town or what have you is a perfect example of what something you could do for an individual artist grant would be. So, yeah. Other questions? You're welcome. 
Is your is this talk being recorded so that it can be re reviewed or? Yes, I, I do have some people that uh, signed up and then realized that they couldn't come. So it is going to be recorded and put onto our YouTube channel so it can be viewed later as oh, well. Great. Okay. Yes. Record it and it will be on your YouTube channel? Correct. It'll be up there hopefully by six o'clock because that's when I scheduled the newsletter to go out about all of this after. Um, it just depends on how quick my upload speed is. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait a minute. I'm looking at Facebook. Uh, you mean you said YouTube? Um, Correct. The YouTube channel. Okay. okay. Which is GV Arts Council or GV Arts. If you look up uh, GVCA and then SER or DEC grant, something will pop up. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Okay. I think we got everything in the chat. So I am going to call it here. Thank you everybody for coming to this first kickoff and to just go over the different parts of the changes in the program. A lot of the questions we went over today will be explained a lot more in full during the seminar, which is about two hours long with a Q&A section. So I see Kathleen raised her hand real quick, so I'll let her jump Just in. Just one more. <laughs> yeah. Are there guidelines for what's a reasonable amount to pay an artist? I do not have that. That kind of varies by very much by location and um, level of professionalism. So unfortunately, we do not have that. Um, it varies by organization and project. So it's hard to put a definitive thing. You can say, you know, the rates for Rochester, but this is the rate for New York City, and they will be two completely different things. So, thanks. Of course, um, Kate, uh, Caitlin. When you said this will, everything will be explained more in depth. Were you referring to that first, that grant writing one hundred and one? No, yeah. uh, to my SDR seminars. So, uh, yeah. like the one at Rush Library or Little Lakes Community Center, et cetera. Oh, okay, those. Okay. Yes. Yep. 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 Got it. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, if you are on our newsletter, there is going to be uh, something going out at six o'clock tonight that has links to all the things that we talked about, to the guidelines, okay. to everything like that. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank okay. you, everybody, for Thank coming. You so much. And I will hey. hopefully see some of you in the next couple of weeks for seminars and consults. Okay. Right. Thank you so much. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye, Caitlin. Thanks Bye, so everybody. much, Caitlin. Thanks. Bye. Great.